of quiz questions about Oregon in general. Now, see, I've perfected the art of answering whatever question I want, not the question you ask. So maybe I should deploy that here, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, here are the stakes, though. So if you get at least two out of the four of the next questions right, you'll win a special prize for you and one of our audience members. Who is the uh, top-scoring person in our pre-show quiz game? Our top-scoring person was, yes, in fact, Caitlin. Congratulations to Caitlin. <laughs> so let's see if you can uh, win something for Caitlin here. Um, so much pressure. <laughs> She's looking right at me, too. <laughs> Caitlin, you can always just shout out something if you think you know the answer. So here's the first question. So I feel like this is a perfect question for you as a healthcare expert. I hope I'm not the only one out there who associates Oregon with the classic kids' computer game, Oregon Trail. Yes? So it's a game where it's an old MS-DOS game where you would uh, have to survive a number of dangers as you trek from Independence, Missouri, all the way to Oregon, going along the Oregon Trail. So which of these diseases is not a possible way of dying in the game Oregon Trail? (laughs) Is it A, dysentery, B, cholera, or C, smallpox? I feel I'm just getting this sense that it might be smallpox, although... I don't feel like there was a lot of endemic color around there, but there, there was smallpox. How, how sure are we? Okay. All right, I'm going to go with smallpox. That's correct. <laughs> you have a very good audience here. I, no, no, it's intuition. Yeah. Really. <laughs> so what's interesting is in addition to these diseases, other causes of death in the game include snake bites, drowning, and oddly enough, a broken arm. I don't know why. So thank goodness that we live in the 21st century where broken arms are no longer a death sentence. (laughs) Okay, now to some actual state trivia. So Oregon's state flag is notable for this special reason. Is it A, it's the only state flag with a different design on the back, B, it's one of only two state flags to have a non-rectangular shape, or C, it features a misspelled Latin motto? All right, I'm going to rule out the different design on the back. That just seems so impractical. I feel like it was rectangular like everybody else's, but a misspelling. I'm going to go with the misspelling. Unfortunately, that's not right. It it actually is A. It actually does have a different design on the back. It's the only state flag. So on the front, it says Oregon, and it has their state seal, the design. And on the back, it actually has a beaver on it. Oh, well, uh, points for the animal on the flag. you got to give them credit for that. Yeah, actually, only Ohio. Ohio is the only state that doesn't have a rectangular shaped flag. So another interesting state flag fact. I I learn so much every day (laughs) at Harris. All right, next question. Oregon and New Jersey share this special distinction among all U.S. states. A, they have the highest per capita concentration of reality TV stars. (laughs) B, they are the only states that ban self-serve gas stations, or C, they both share the same official state nut, the hazelnut. <laughs> so you got this. I grew up in New Jersey, Woo. and when I went to college for the first time, I was like, but I, so I have this implement and I have my car, but how am I supposed to get the gas from the implement into the car? Because I had never pumped my own gas because New Jersey has no self-serve. So I'm going with that. That's correct. Uh, I am also New Jersey born and bred, so oh, there you go. that definitely popped into my mind. I yeah. have never pumped my own gas still to this day. I don't know how to do it. I so cried at the pump and made some Take the pointy nozzle me. and you open up the little gate thing and there's a cap and then you just stick it in there and the gas comes in. Yeah, but how do you know when to stop? It's it stops all by itself. <laughs> it's really smarter than we are. All right, okay. Things right. only people from New Jersey struggle <laughs> with. Right. And Oregon. That's not the only thing that people from oh, New Jersey okay. struggle with. Okay, oh, we'll get into that later. Yeah, thrown. <laughs> okay, the final wait, wait, question. I only had to get two right. So right? you're in the clear. <laughs> but we'll do this final sure. question just sure. to see. Of course, of course. All right, so this holiday season, Oregon will serve which of the following special functions? A, it will provide the Capitol Christmas tree to be displayed in Washington, D.C. B, it will host the command center for the NORAD Santa Tracker. Or C, its Capitol Salem will feature the largest Hanukkah menorah in the U.S. Oh, definitely not that. Huh. 
right? So I feel like the tree comes from somewhere else usually, so I might eliminate that one. The menorah sounds like the very inclusive culture that you would expect from Oregon, although I don't think it has a particularly large Jewish population. NORAD, the Santa tracker, as we know, could be anywhere and everywhere, and it is sort of, but I, I don't know. What do you, Caitlin, should we go with menorah or with NORAD? <laughs> that was totally unfair. I shouldn't put it on you. <laughs> No pressure. You've already won. Is it just the tree yeah. hopper or the whole tree? It's the whole tree. I feel it's like, the whole don't tree. they move it around to give uh, other states a chance to give the yeah. best of their oh, trees? Oh, oh. So sorry. Sorry. Maybe that was hasty. I Maybe know. I was hasty I with like the tree. Yeah. The Pacific Northwest has a lot of good trees to Beautiful. offer. It does. They it don't want to give any one state a preference. <laughs> She's really for, working that. She's know. lobbying hard. I, 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 I'm persuaded. It sounded like a good argument. Let's go with the tree. That's right. Sakrita came through. Yes, so actually she's correct that the tree comes from different places each year. And it's actually only the second one that Oregon has had come from the state. So happy for them. (laughs) All right, well, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, this is great. Oh, special prize. For winning your prize. I I hope it's a tree from Oregon. Oh, even better. So here's a copy of Weird Oregon so you can learn even more facts about the state. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, welcome back. We're going to get back into the quiz section of Have You Heard? The UC3P News Quiz. All right. So now we're moving to multiple choice trivia questions where I'll give you three answer choices and you'll have to do your best to pick the right one. Okay. Much easier. Uh, We'll start with some interesting stories about the summer's World Cup which oh, is uh, otherwise known as the one time every four years when Americans actually care about soccer. Who wants to start? Nope. Nope? All right. Nope. Nancy, you're, oh, you're the one then. Let's okay, watch Nancy. me be an idiot. Burger King's Russian division got into some trouble with, for a social media campaign at launch while the World Cup was in Russia this summer. Burger King? Burger King. Oh, so it offered a cash prize and a lifetime supply of Whoppers if people did which of the following? Was it A, rush the field during a live match, B, injure one of the top players from Croatia before Russia's quarterfinals appearance against them, or C, get impregnated by one of the World Cup players? What? All of these sound insane. I feel like the second one is a no-go. You're just asking for lawsuits there. All these are terrible. Um, Definitely not number two, I don't think impregnate or rush the field? I'm going to go with rush the f- field. You're a little bit too cautious and practical. It's oh actually, they put out an ad saying if you get impregnated by one of the World oh Cup players, oh God. you'll get a cash prize and a lifetime supply of Whoppers. <laughs> and hopefully a lifetime supply of alimony payments. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my so God. It's since apologized though and That's they actually me. pulled down the ad in case you're worried. <laughs> okay, Sukriti. Come on it. Another example of how Russia is a unique country was provided by the BBC, which reported that Russian train conductors and FIFA employees were being trained in which of the following skills to prepare for the World Cup? Was it A, how to smile so as to seem friendlier? Okay. How to reduce eye contact so as to appear less creepy? <laughs> or C, how to shake hands less vigorously so as to seem less aggressive? Interesting. Ooh. I think they had to do this for McDonald's employees. They had to teach them to smile to be more warm and inviting to, uh, to tourists coming. I'm going to say A. That's correct. <laughs> yes. Apparently, Russians aren't accustomed to smiling that much. One film director even told the BBC that she was stopped by a Russian police officer because he found her smiling to be suspicious. <laughs> Okay, and that leaves Alex. Good. All right, so Russia is not alone in its World Cup eccentricities. In Japan, Rabiot the giant Pacific octopus became a national sensation after it did which of the following? A, learned to kick a soccer ball with one of its tentacles. B, correctly predicted the results of Japan's first three World Cup matches. Or C, curled into a ball and rolled into a soccer goal nearby a fisherman's shop. Oh, my God. Go with that one. (laughs) Obviously, it was C. Um, No. B, I think, is right. Yes, B is right. Look at that. 
If you knew me, you would be shocked that the one question I got right was the sports question. <laughs> yeah, it was actually called a psychic octopus. So a rabiot the octopus was set up in a pool with three baskets representing Japan winning, tying, or losing. And whichever one it swam into would be its prediction, which it got right three times in a row. But sadly, despite its success, its owner still decided to kill it and send it to market. What? Oh, no. That's the worst uh, I hope that a markup. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. That's, That's an great. economist in the making. <laughs> you know. Great. Uh, Nancy, we'll go back to you. So at the same time that England was advancing to knockout rounds of the World Cup, the UK was also facing what terrible crisis? Was it A, a CO2 shortage that caused beer supplies to run dangerously low because they couldn't get enough fizz? B, tainted beef that poisoned dozens who ate shepherd's pie at a a London pub? Or C, a research report that came out warning that Brexit would cause a shortage of soccer balls in the UK? Hmm... I feel like the lack of fizz would be particularly terrible during the World Cup. The beef shortage, that doesn't seem like it. Um, And then the shortage of soccer balls just seems too silly. I'll go with A. A is correct. Yes. Look at me getting one. British CO2 plants were running at only 20% capacity, and some wholesalers had to start rationing beer and cider, while some bottlers even halted production. Oh, boy. Let us pray. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Alex. Despite a tiny national population of just over 300,000, Iceland has fielded a surprisingly successful team in recent World Cups. Iceland's coach, Heimar Hallgrimsson, has a skill set not limited to just soccer, however. Which of these things does he not do on the side? (laughs) A, work part-time as a dentist. B, dress up as an Icelandic troll during Christmas time. Or C, sell car insurance to friends and family. Oh, man. I feel like he definitely does the troll thing. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure. Um, I wouldn't be shook if he was a dentist. What, what was C again? Remind Selling car insurance. Car insurance? Yeah, I'm going to go with car insurance. That's correct. He does not do that. <laughs> but you're right that he is a part-time dentist and dresses up as a troll. And a troll, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sukriti. Meanwhile, in Mexico... Their nation's team unexpectedly beat Germany in the World Cup. And this allegedly led to which of the following issues? A, the destruction of dozens of Volkswagen cars during celebrations in Mexico City. B, a minor man-made earthquake in Mexico City. Or C, a spike in employee absenteeism the next day due to intense hangovers. Oh, man. I feel like it's got to be hangovers. No, it actually isn't. It's the earthquake, It's the earthquake, that's right. That's amazing. The Institute for Geological and Atmospherical Investigations tweeted that its seismographic equipment picked up activity most likely produced by the massive celebration. That's amazing. Yeah. Science, better America. (laughs) So I know what you're all thinking, World Cup, sports, boring. But don't worry, you're you Chicago students. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want And I know what you need. So this next round will provide the shot of academia you're looking for. Oh, boy. So (laughs) as many of you know, last year, Chicago Booth professor Richard Thaler, he won the Nobel Prize in Economics for his research on behavioral economics. What you may be less familiar with is that Harvard and MIT annually host the Ig Nobel Awards to celebrate unusual or trivial achievements in scientific research. (laughs) These questions will quiz you on this year's awards. Oh, thank God. (laughs) It's my favorite award show. I watch it every year. (laughs) Well, Alex, we'll start with you then. (laughs) Which of these research papers did not win an Ig Nobel this year? Is it A, a paper that devised a way to perform a self-colonoscopy? Oh, God. (laughs) B, a paper that discovered that prehistoric man did not have eyebrows? Or C, a paper that found that abusing a virtual voodoo doll of your boss will make you feel better. Well, I wrote the one about the voodoo doll of the boss, so I'm happy to say it won, so it's not that one. Um, I'm going to go with the eyebrows. That's correct. Wow. What? He's on a Are roll. It, is it too, like... For fire. Oh, I get... But, like... No, that was the one that didn't win, so it was just the one that I... That's a fictitious paper. The yeah. other two were real ones Aren't that won. Men just entirely hair covered, so... Yeah. <laughs> eyebrows hairy. really kind of blend in with the sure, hair. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's about right. All right, Sukriti. Eyes, when you are awarded an Ig Nobel Prize... As I have been. <laughs> which of the following do you win? 
Is it A, a stick of dynamite, the invention of Alfred Nobel, B,